VR is already cool, but to make it truly immersive, you don't just need your head in another world, you need your hands there too. These are the Oculus Touch, the company's brand new VR input devices, and they make something called hand presence possible in VR. But getting to this design was a process of more than two years of smart thinking and scores of prototypes. The very first thing that you need in order to bring your hands into VR is to have a perfectly tracked solution. Much like a headset has embedded LEDs that a sensor reads and positions something in space, tracks something in space, they knew that the hand controller needed to do the same thing. The very early investigations hinged on how much space do we provide to embed some infrared LEDs and let the computer read these? This is what it would look like if we made it as easy as possible for the computer. But no one wants to hold two school bus sized steering wheels in their hands in order to do something. And as that tracking portion shrunk, the question of how it fit in your hand became something to explore. Would something fit onto your hand? Was it something that you could hold almost like a flight stick? The main binary became, is this something you're gonna hold or is this something you're going to wear? When you wear something, it has the obvious benefit of being able to just open your hand and it's there. But getting these on and off left a lot to be desired from a user experience perspective. Now while that debate was being had, the decision of what to put on this area, on the face, was going on. What are they gonna put here? Is it gonna be thumbsticks? Is it gonna be a D-pad, like on a regular game controller? Here's an example of one thing that they tried for the face of the controller. It has an analog thumbstick, much like one you'd see on a conventional game controller, but the more thinking that they did about this, the more they realized it wasn't gonna work. And why is that? It's because your thumb swings out a lot more easily than it swings in. So if you have a centered thumbstick and you have buttons on either side, that's not gonna be comfortable over long stretches of time. So all this exploration really led to this, the culmination of a lot of those decisions. And once they got to this, the real design work could begin. It has a small ring with all the embedded tracking on it. It has a trigger here and would eventually get one here. But on the face, what you can see is going on is that thumbstick is more to the inside and the buttons are to the outside. So from this came what's known as the Half Moon prototype. This is something that was brought to the E3 video game show summer of 2015. And this was really the first time that anybody outside of Oculus saw this device. The tracking is naked to the world. You can see where those LEDs are and you can see how the thumbstick is beginning to take shape. You can see that secondary trigger is here. And from here until now came some iteration inside the company and it eventually got us to the finished product. Now what's going on here is more than just having tracking that you can't see hidden inside this ring of infrared translucent plastic. And it's more than having the finished triggers and the finished input buttons and these thumbsticks. These buttons, this thumb rest, and these thumbsticks all register when your thumb is on them. The triggers register when you're pressing them. So through various permutations of having your thumb on something, resting away from, it lets your hands in virtual reality give thumbs up, grip things, and that's the kind of thing that actually gives hand presence. It's not just, are my hands open or are my hands closed? It's giving your hands a set of discrete actions that helps you translate the thing you're trying to communicate into a VR surrounding. And so, you're talking about two and a half years of design thinking, and it all culminates in this, the Oculus Touch.